Hey guys, I'm Austin with Absorb Media, and today I'm gonna to give you five tips that I would give to any wedding filmmaker. I've been shooting weddings for about six years now. Weddings are a great opportunity to learn and challenge your run and gun documentary filmmaking skills. And there is no standard way to film a wedding day. Everyone has their own style and product they send to their clients. But here are some tips I would give to someone who is just starting out shooting wedding films, or maybe you've shot a few and could use a couple tips. Number one, meet the couple. It's best to meet them face to face or virtually. Explain how you'll be working with them. Get to know them a little bit. Let them know how many cameras you're gonna have and whether or not you have any mics you'll be putting on them around or anything that could possibly affect their wedding plans. Another reason you wanna do this is make sure that you guys will be a good fit and that you guys are gonna work well together. Cause sometimes you might meet a couple and they want some things that maybe you can't pull off or vice versa. Number two, get a contract. A contract is meant to protect both parties. So make sure when you're making these that it's fair on both sides. Disclaimer, Absorb Media, we aren't lawyers here. We're a YouTube channel. Now tip number three, I think we're on number three. I've already lost count, we're not even that far. Audio, you can love the bride, officiant, or the groom. But if you had to pick one and you only got one mic to work with, I would mic the groom. Because the groom's most likely gonna be where He's getting married, right? Where the audio is happening. And usually the mic on them is enough to pick up everyone around. I've had luck with that. I usually only mic the groom and officiant, sometimes the bride, but that can be difficult depending on the dress. Also just having audio in your wedding film will enhance it and take it to another level. And then you have some fun audio to play with some voiceover and make it real dramatic. Tip number four, learn multicam editing. It's always better if you can get at least two, at least two cameras during the ceremony. One down the aisle, maybe one up close if you can. I would try to get close. I like to have minimal of three, one down the aisle and two crossing ones. You have all those angles to pick from. I'll sometimes bring five or six. The more the better. Best to have more coverage, especially during the ceremony. But again, try not to be too intrusive and let the couple know how many cameras will be in the way and where you will be. Tip number five, make a shot list. And it can be a mental shot list or a physical one. I usually take notes on Google Keep and just check them off throughout the day, but make sure you get the main shots as you go. As you check them, you'll have some feeling of relief knowing you're getting the shots you need to make the film you need to deliver. I know I said five tips for wedding filmmakers, but you know what? Since you hung around and you watched all the way up to this point, I'm gonna go ahead and give you five bonus more. How about that? Does that earn a like? Or did we just get a dislike for that? Because I lied to you. Here's tip number six. Weddings are long, so stay light. That's tip number six, stay light. Light meaning don't rig your camera up too much. Don't bring too much crap you're not gonna use because I've made this mistake over and over and over. I always bring more and more. And as I became a more experienced wedding filmmaker, my gear, my gear list has gotten smaller. Even a small rig with the handle and monitor, that's probably enough. But if you start adding rails or anything else to get that, just make sure it's worth it because any bit of weight does add up, especially as hours go on throughout the day. Tip number seven, where's the autofocus? There it is. Tip number seven, lenses. I recommend bringing zoom lenses and stay away from primes. If you have a prime, I would keep it on one camera and that's what stays on it the whole day. That's what I try to do. I made the mistake of first starting out by bringing all kinds of primes and shooting a wedding as if it was a planned, precise narrative film that I was gonna have time to change lenses, switch from a 24 to an 85 whenever I needed. That's not the case with weddings, so it's best to stay mobile. And even if that means a little bit of quality loss or not the shallowest lens, it might be worth it just to keep a zoom. We typically have a 24 to 70, a 16 to 35, and a 70 to 200 are our main go-to lenses that we bring for weddings. But I think you would be a lot less stressed if you're not worrying about when to change lenses, how much time you have to get to your other lenses if you're not carrying them on you in a bag, which is more weight. Yeah, I would stick to zoom lenses, especially just starting out. Tip number eight, get yourself a friend. Go meet somebody. Get on Omegle, some chat rooms, Craigslist, find a friend somewhere. But out of all seriousness, if you can find somebody to partner up with and shoot weddings, I highly recommend it. I honestly don't think I will shoot a wedding alone ever because I feel like it's almost a necessity to have two shooters. Even if you gotta charge extra on top of your price to hire someone, it'll be worth it to you and the couple. 
it's so relieving knowing you have someone else there, a second person to have coverage during the ceremony, another person running around, because the beginning of the day can be really hectic before the ceremony. Wait, what, what number was that? Wedding tip number nine, be friendly. Be nice to all the vendors. The people that are there are working with you, not against you. You're all there working for the same couple and have the same job to please the same client. So you're all friends there, be nice. I like to ask the couple ahead of time for the DJ and officiant's number to reach out, say hello, introduce myself, either over email or text, and let them know if they were okay with me tapping into the DJ board if I'm doing it that day, or to put a mic on the officiant. Now my last tip to you wedding filmmakers is be confident. Don't be nervous. I know it can be nerve wracking knowing that you're filming someone's one and only special day and we hope it's their only and last wedding. But relax, they hire you to capture their day. As long as you capture something that's more than they would have had without you there. And usually any moment you capture, even if the composition is bad or the lighting is terrible, it's still the raw moment and memories of how that day actually went for them. And don't worry, They'll love the product. Just don't make a crappy film. Just kidding, I don't think you'll make a crappy film. You'll do good. Just do the best you can. I've been doing this for so long and I'm still learning. You learn that after every shoot, you'll never know it all. I don't know what else to say. I felt like that was uh, awkward for you guys who might not know and I was being sarcastic. You'll do great. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. See? I believe in you. The autofocus isn't working. There it is. Well, that's it for this video. If you guys found any of that useful, I'm gonna step back into my diffusion. If you found any of that useful, Please like this video. If you found it horrible and it ruined your whole career, then I guess I deserve a dislike if I ruined your life. If you made it this far in this video, I really appreciate you watching. Um, I think, yeah, like subscribe or something. We'll keep making more videos. And what else do you guys wanna see? Do you have any questions about any of the tips I gave? Because each one of these tips I can definitely dive into deeper and in more detail. If you're interested in that, let us know in the comments below. Okay, bye.